the morning, always presented by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first here on WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. And in the studio with us this morning, Jonathan Bogert from the Historical and Genealogical Society of Indiana County. And Joanne McQuilkin is with him this morning as well. So, Mr. Bogert, Mrs. McQuilkin, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. It's good to have you both with us. Uh, so I'm understanding that there is a very momentous occasion coming up for the Historical and Genealogical Society. Yes, that's correct. Uh, this Thursday, November 16th, we will be um, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Armory. We will be celebrating the Society's 85th birthday. So going all the way back to 1938 when we were founded, been 85 years, and there's been a lot of movement around and a lot of artifacts that have been collected and a lot of interesting people that have passed through the Society's doors. So we're going to be celebrating that uh, oh, this coming yes. Thursday, 6 my, to 8. My goodness. Uh, and Joanne, uh, for you, you probably knew some of those folks uh, yes, who were Yes, I there. did. Francis Strong Hellman was a leading force in starting the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And she was a little lady with a top knot on her hair and cat eye glasses at one time. <laughs> uh, she was born in 1903, died in 1980. She's out at Oakland Cemetery. Mm -hmm. She uh, moved to Indiana when she was three and was a, a, a descendant of John Lydic, who helped settle Indiana County. Wow. She was quite the lady. Is it all right if I go keep on sure. going? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You're telling she, us some fascinating stuff. All right. She uh, belonged to the DAR, the D Daughters of the American Colonists, the Children of the American Colonists. She was the national president at one time wow. for that group. And my son was in that group along with uh, Paul Wass's daughter, uh, Mrs. Hood, uh, Min Dimmons. Uh, that was a great grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, was Sally Dimmitt, and Gary Tweed was president at one time for the children, and they were quite a little group at one time, and were quite enjoyed learning about history. She was really interested, and she just thought everybody should know their roots and know about Indiana yeah. County and what they do. But one of the fascinating things that mm -hmm. intrigued me, she was the only woman in the Commonwealth at one time, who was the uh, head of civil defense. And really? That, yes, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. I had not known that. But when going back to knowing her, um, I will never forget going to visit her at her home. And as all of us who do lots of projects, her living room was filled with paper all over, <laughs> and I know she knew where every pile was, what <laughs> everything was in it. Now, and where did she live? She lived over, um, oh, I can take you to it. It's, uh, it's over by where KFC is today, I believe. Yes. Over yes. near the point. Yes, uh -huh. and a side street. It was just, she just had a few neighbors. Mm -hmm. And one thing about her I will never forget, she did not worry about color. She was, uh, had, she was not a prejudiced woman uh -huh. about anything like that. She was great that way. Yeah. And, uh, but I know the young people enjoyed her. And my son said you could hear her. She had a clear speaking voice mm -hmm. when they had their meetings. And uh, I think they really enjoyed all that. And going back off Mrs. Hellman, in that, John has done so much in bringing this society with everybody in the past that has worked towards this. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Clark House now, it looks more like a home. And we have done a lot of uh, renovations for that. But at that time, those were there were long tables. The women would sit there cutting out the obituaries and things. It was a business. There were files cases. It did look anything the way it does now. No. And I hope people will come and see what what is here. Yeah, We really have a wonderful, wonderful historical society. So she was in on the founding of it in 1938. Oh, she did. 1936, it said in my... Uh, 36. Uh, 30, 38, it would be. Yes, yeah. 38. Yeah. Wow, my goodness. Well, something like that doesn't just come together. It takes no, people no. like that. Oh, and that she happen. worked all her life towards all these historical. Yeah. Things. Oh, and she wrote. She was a prolific writer. Very prolific oh, yeah. writer, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. And Jonathan, I, I'm sure that you've read some of that. Yes, yeah, she actually, um, one of my favorite pieces that Frances uh, Hellman uh, compiled is 
a collection of sort of myths, legends, and ghost stories surrounding Indiana County. Oh, yeah. So the ghost of Pack Saddle Gap, uh, the fiddling ghost up uh, up north. I mean, there are just so many fascinating uh, little tales there. But she collected all of these stories and information from people locally who had roots or were maybe one step away from the original settlers. And so just like Joanne ha is our connection to Francis, Francis spoke with people who were connected almost uh, to that in, uh, in mm -hmm. initial uh, settling of the area. So wow. uh, very, very fascinating. Yeah, she probably knew old Mighty Fine up uh, up around our direction. Probably. <laughs> good, good old Mighty Fine. Anytime you saw him, you'd say, how are you doing? He'd say, Mighty Fine. Mighty Fine. <laughs> Mighty Fine. May I say one more thing? You may say whatever uh, you wish. Oh, uh, she was married to Blaine Hellman in mm -hmm. 1922, but what fascinated me, he worked for the streetcar company. Uh -huh. And there is another story uh, that is, I, I think, is great about Indiana. A bygone era. Yeah. And I remember as a child coming up here to shop, and I remember that, and in college too, I think there were still uh, our, uh, the streetcar tracks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Wow. Wow. See, see, Helen, your connection, uh, Joanne, uh, your connection to uh, to that day and age uh, is invaluable as well. And and you, where, that's what the Historical and Genealogical Society is all about. That's true. So, Jonathan, what are we going to find out on, on would you say, Thursday? Yep, Thursday, November 16th. Mm -hmm. Folks can like? join us uh, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we are going to have uh, the pro ladies on the program committee have been hard at work putting together a presentation that essentially goes by decade, starting with the society's founding, and it looks at some of the key things that happened um, by decade at the society. There is so much to cover, so many amazing artifacts that came into our possession, um, documents, people that were a part of the society and building the museum and archives as it is today. So it's we're going to take 85 years of uh, of activity and we're going to uh, compress it into a uh, presentation. So squeeze they've been hard at work. Yes, they've been. We're going to compress it, squeeze it down. And the ladies have been incredibly uh, diligent in doing their research. Um, one of our volunteers, Alan Fichuk, uh, went through a lot of the old newspapers and compiled that uh, by decade. So we have a wealth of information. And just looking at some of the artifacts that were donated over the years, portraits of prominent individuals, um, murder weapons even, um, items murder from weapons? Yeah, murder weapons, yes, <laughs> from past cases, uh, pottery, clocks, uh, tavern licenses. Those are always fun to look at, uh -huh. yes. So wow. um, we even have in our collection the letter that Anthony Hollingsworth, uh, the uh, individual mm -hmm. that – uh, escaped um, on his path to freedom up to Canada, uh, stopping here in Indiana, was freed by Judge Thomas White, and he wrote a letter back to uh, Dr. Mitchell, who had helped him, and um, thanking him for his time and helping him get um, and you to freedom. you have that letter. We have that person. letter. It was part of Dr. Mitchell had a daughter named Jenny, and Jenny put together a scrapbook, as many young ladies did at the time, mm -hmm. and that letter is one of the pieces that is in there. So, wow. and so we'll be celebrating all of that uh, this coming Thursday, uh, November 16th. So folks can come out, and yes. it's free, I would assume? Free to attend, yes. Mm -hmm. Free to attend. There will be some light refreshments. Um, there will be a signature mixed drink as well for those interested. So mm -hmm. uh, a good time all around. I would assume that uh, with um, items that, such as the letter that you just mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, that the preservation of those, is not only a little important to you, mm -hmm. it's very important to uh, any historical society such as yours. And uh, so that's an ongoing thing that never gets, uh, that's a job that never gets completed. Absolutely. And well, that's the uh, fun thing about the society. There's always a job to be done. There's always something to preserve, even as I think we've discussed before on this program, that the conversation we're having now will one day be archived and become part of history. Uh, Laura Harrington and I just gave a talk at when we celebrated the Taurus Bureau's 60th anniversary. And that I, we were joking around that presentation when they're looking to do the 100th anniversary, they'll probably look back and say, oh, well, here are these two people giving a presentation back for the 60th. Yeah. So every uh, step we take pretty much becomes a neat little slice of history. Boy, Joanne, I better clean up my language then and not stutter <laughs> around so much. When, you know, if people are going to be looking at this 100 years from now wondering about that dude. Right. Huh? <laughs>
But my goodness, the stories that are told, and uh, you have uh, the unique advantage of having heard them right from the original yes. speakers of those stories. Yes. Must it, be was, it was a, a joy to know her. Yeah. I did not know her that well, but I certainly remember her. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. You know. So, uh, uh, Mim, Mim, uh, Mrs. Hood, who was, I think, prothonotary at one time, and uh, my mother-in-law, Anna McQuilk, worked with her, and that's how I got to know uh -huh. her through my mother-in-law. So you mentioned her with civil defense. Yes. Uh, and, and she was the statewide leader of, of civil defense yeah. for Pennsylvania. In what era was that? Was that during a wartime uh, era All or it afterwards? said in the, the, the things that I looked up, that she worked at the hospital in the 30s and then mentioned that. Uh -huh. And so I had assumed it might be during World War II, but I really don't know. Do you, John? It would have likely been during World War I II. I would yes. think. Yeah. But she was into everything. It's like John said, we were talking about it. She belonged to uh, lots of things. The Taurus Bureau, too, of course. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention that with all her historical mm -hmm. uh, uh, groups that she belonged to. Yeah. But she was quite the lady. And, yeah. Uh, Part of the fabric. Yes. That's what yes, she was. Yes. Well, it's going to be a great event. Uh, John, again, it is from when to when? Uh, it's, folks can join us uh, this Thursday, November 16th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Armory. Wonderful. Joanne McQuilkin and Jonathan Bogert with us this morning. The Historical and Genealogical Society of Indiana County, 85 years. Wow. Hey, thanks both for coming in today. Oh, we, thanks for having thank us. Thank you for time. having us. It is our pleasure. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. 23 minutes after 9 o'clock. Coming up, the CBS Sports Minute, a couple of moments away from now. We need to get this morning's Money Matters report in. Here's Aaron Rayel. House Speaker Mike Johnson is putting forward a two-step temporary funding plan to avoid a government shutdown. Democratic Congressman Brendan Boyle of Pennsylvania says the continuing resolution doesn't line up with what's needed, but he is seeing some signs of progress. We all know the way this is going to end. Uh, we're going to get a clean CR. The only question is, will we get it before a government shutdown or will we get it some days and weeks in?